This is the Momentum Podcast. Once per quarter, we gather our members for the Simple Operations Summit. We have members attend both virtually and in person, and one of the highlights of the event always ends up being when we get a group of our members together to uh, have a panel. It's an opportunity to see the radical growth that they're experiencing um, and also understand what key tactics in the simple operations system they're implementing in order to achieve those results. In this episode of the Momentum Podcast, you're going to hear from four incredible entrepreneurs who are making a massive impact with their business. First, we have Amanda Minear, who's the CEO of Veterans Law Group. They're helping disabled veterans receive their deserved benefits from the VA. Gabe Arnold is the CEO of Business Marketing Engine. They're an online agency, and it's making a massive impact in the lives of the entrepreneurs that they help. Jason and Rachel Bradley are the co-founders of Epic Functional Medicine. They're taking a holistic approach to wellness and healing. In this panel, these incredible entrepreneurs are going to share the results that simplifying their business operations has helped them achieve and the greatest areas of leverage for entrepreneurs just like you. I hope you enjoy. I'm Alex Sharfin, and this is the Momentum Podcast, made for empire builders, game changers, trailblazers, shot takers, record breakers, world makers, and creators of all kinds. Those among us who can't turn it off and don't know why anyone would want to. We challenge complacency, destroy apathy, and we are obsessed with creating momentum so we can roll over bureaucracy and make our greatest contribution. Sure, we pay attention to their rules, but only so that we can bend them, break them, then rewrite them around our own own will. We don't accept our destiny. We define it. We don't understand defeat because you only lose if you stop and we don't know how. While the rest of the world strives for average and clings desperately to the status quo, we are the minority, the few who are willing to hallucinate there could be a better future. And instead of just daydreaming of what could be, we endure the vulnerability and exposure it takes to make it real. We are are the evolutionary hunters, clearly the most important people in the world, because entrepreneurs are the only source of consistent, positive human evolution, and we always will be. So we want to hear you. We want, we want you to hear from people who are implementing the, the program. And the one thing, and I want you all to hear this, like the one thing that we make sure of on our panels is that we're not getting like the, the fuzzy part of the story, we were getting the real story, like what really is working, where has there been challenges? That way there's validation for the room and you can also see like where, are they, where have they been successful? And so I'll give you this microphone. We only have one this event, so you'll, we'll just have to pass it around. Um, but I wanna be able to just start with, I know we already did introductions, but just so everybody has context again, what type of company do you have? How many team members? What's your current revenue? And how long have you been in this program? So. Type of company, team members, revenue, program. Oh, sorry, I'm, and I think I handed it to you, turned off. Just slide that up, there you go. Hello. There you go. Um, Amanda Manier, I am the CEO of Veterans Law Group, managing attorney. We're a law firm that helps veterans with their VA disability benefits. We have a team of 14. Um, our best year was about a year and a half, or two years ago, about $4 million. We deal with the VA all the time with when they're going to pay and so when they're not. So I told Alex the other day the VA currently owes us $1.6 million. So it's going to be a good year. It's just not right now. <laughs> so, um, and I've been with the program since 2018. 18, yeah. 2018, yeah. Awesome. I'm Gabe Arnold. I'm the CEO of Business Marketing Engine, and we came in as a full-service marketing firm and have made a really great pivot into a specific niche, which I'm excited about. Um, and uh, we have 40 team members. Um, we're at like 1.6 million run rate, and we've been in the program just about a year. Awesome. Uh, Jason, Rachel, thank you, Abby. I'm Rachel. This is Jason. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've been, um, I, I want to answer the how long we've been in the program first. Type of I'm company trying to figure it out what type of company type of company is uh we're in functional medicine and uh just went fully virtual with that and I'd say um, that we're in the teleeducation yeah so we're making pivots uh some big ones really to try to change the face of healthcare and how it's delivered too um we're currently at six where well, last year we were at 622 um we kind of shrank to to went backwards to go forwards basically um and we have six full-time, two part-time team members. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been in the program? That's what we were trying to figure out. <laughs> it's like two years, isn't it? Two. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three? Maybe three. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start with you all. So what was the biggest challenge you were facing when you joined the program? 
a little bit of everything. I think the first time we saw Alex talk, he was talking about chasing rabbits. And I think that came up this time too. And I think that we see opportunity in everything. Um, but that gets you going everywhere and burn out and you're not like, I love the name of simple operations because all I'm hearing all weekend is like, keep things super simple. Um, and so I think our biggest challenge was just not, sh you know, doing, trying to do too many things, trying to do our own funnels, trying to do our own, you know, um, things we weren't good at at the time. Now we're learning how to do our own things like that. But um, I would say that's. I would, I would say too, uh, we had been building our clinic, and I would say it was really traditional, even though it was functional medicine, but more like in that traditional delivery model. Um, and we had built it up to about 1.8 uh, annual run rate, and I was burned out, I'll be super honest. Like, I wasn't happy. I mean, I believed in what I was doing, but I was just totally burned out, and I didn't know what to do. And so uh, I knew I wanted to be in, in this genre, but... Um, could, I couldn't sustain what I was still what I was doing. So I think Alex really helped helped us focus on extracting me a little bit. And yeah, I, here we, three years later, I think that we're getting there. <laughs> Not a good look when you're the stressed out functional medicine doctor helping other people be stressed. <laughs> right, right. It's, right. it's a good true. it's a good feeling. <laughs> we're taking away the unicorn. Um, you're not a unicorn, you know, vibe, and uh, that's been good for us. So. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Gabe? What was the biggest challenge when you came in? Um, I, I had the, I, the business is 15 years old this year, and I feel like I've grown it from just brute force and persistence, which I'm good at. But I was like, there's no way that it can keep scaling this way. And so I came in um, having just fired my third, what I didn't know the title, operator, um, <laughs> and doing that wrong the third time. And so that was pretty discouraging. And so I, yeah, I would say just like not having an effective leadership structure, I was definitely in the you got them and it's no matter how many systems or ways I try to back out of that because I knew I shouldn't be doing that. And I was just always getting drug into things that I shouldn't. And then I would be making decisions and projects from a reactionary state because I was like pulled into the fire and like I can put out fires, but then I have to be the hero over and over and over or the rescuer or whatever the whatever the triangle is. <laughs> um, and so I, I just felt like, I don't know how I can sustain this, have the personal life I want. You know, I, my goal for years has been able to take three months off and have the business grow without me. Um, and so I put a lot of things in place to do parts of that, but it, if I would try it or do the experiment for a couple of weeks or have a slow month, I would see the business slow and start to stall. So I was like, I don't have a sustainable system. Um, so I just felt super, I wasn't in a super high overwhelm state when I actually joined because I had been starting to use the Momentum Journal for, you know, six months and that made a massive impact in revenue. But I still was like, I don't have the pieces to put this together. I don't think I'm leading effectively. I just really started to question, like, can I get to my goal? Because I have a really, really big goal as an entrepreneur to be doing a billion dollars a year by the time I'm 65. Hmm. And so I'm like, I am going to get there and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. But just more of the same effort isn't going to isn't going to get me there. Amanda, same thing for you. What was the biggest challenge? And I know this is four years ago, but can you remember back and like what was yeah. it? Yeah. OK, good. Um, what I want to say <laughs> that was is a super do, confident. Yes. <laughs> do I remember what the challenge was at the time or what I thought it was? <laughs> um, why don't <laughs> you just explain at, that? At the time, I would have said that my biggest struggle was lead generation and marketing and dealing with the marketing team. Um, my team is internally was all attorneys and paralegals. Who do you go to market for marketing to understand why is our website not generating the leads like it used to do and all that kind of thing. So in my very initial conversation with Alex before I joined the program, he was like, there's certain things that you need to kind of work on before coming and joining the program. And, and I did. Um, but I realized that probably my biggest problem now, what I realized looking back is my biggest thing that I needed at that time was more internally and personal support and learning how to be a leader to grow a company. I know I came in to a business that had done three to $400,000 for 
15 years. You know, they were very much stuck in that billionaire code. And just what I had not known and brought to the business got us up to almost two million. And it was like, ooh, this is possible, but I don't know how to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm not, also not capable is what I felt like, not capable of doing this. So I went looking for help. I remember when you told me you weren't capable. I was like, yeah. let's never say that again. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, this isn't on the list of questions that Abby gave me, but I think it's, it's one of the questions I like to start out with, or at least one of the questions that's kind of being called for me to ask now. Amanda, we'll start with you. If talk, there's a lot of new people here this week, there, how many of you are under a year in the cadence? Put your hands up really high. Okay, so speaking to all the people who are brand new, you've been here four years. If you could go back and say, man, the one thing I wish I had started sooner or the mindset I should have adopted or the belief I should have had, what would have helped you four years ago accelerate your progress even faster? Um, Well, what I'm really certainly learning this week is to be very structured about our policies instead of I'm a very laid back person. And I have always kind of been, you know, hey, as long as you get your job done, as long as long as you get the outcome done. I'm okay with the rest, but that's become a problem um, with people doing things their own way and all the issues we talked about yesterday. Um, But as far as implementing what I think helped us really grow was honestly in the last like nine months or so, Gabe came in and brought us a waterfall to our marketing. So I was using outside sources and all that kind of thing and things were working, but it was still like that we were lacking that accountability piece where that was, we had meetings every two weeks and it was you know, they would update me on what was going on and I was still somewhat lost on what was on. So implementing the things of the cadence, even towards outsourced people mm. um, has been really helpful lately. And I know I told you the other day and I just found out my, our new numbers here that um, our last year we had our best year as far as bringing in new clients, our critical number. And that was 206 new clients. So this year we were like, let's do a 10% increase as our goal of 227. And we just signed 93 this morning. <laughs> 93 so, as of March. Isn't that yeah. awesome? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it feels like all the pieces are really working. And it has just been literally like I'll take a piece of the cadence and plug it in. And then I'm not great at structure, if, if many of us are. So some of it kind of falls apart. And then I'm like, OK, let's get back to doing that and then add this, which reinforces it. But what I learned very early on is trying to put it all in place really quickly didn't work, at least for us. Um, I know you guys are working on a 90 day thing to help with that, but it seems like so much on top of everything else, but it was like, okay, I'm just going to start this next thing. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, you know, weekly commitments. And then we're going to do our daily huddles and then just add one more thing on each time. That has been I remember you and I used to talk a lot about progress over perfection. Yes. (laughs) Because in the legal field, everybody tries to be perfect and it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, have never really called myself a perfectionist. I didn't really look at it like that. But what I looked at it as I had an expectation that my team expected me a perfection from me. I didn't expect perfection for myself, but I had a thought process that they expected it and they really don't. Awesome. Okay. Gabe, same question. So we just got a four year perspective. You have about a year perspective, which is fresher. If you could go back 12 months, what do you wish you had done sooner or what would you what would you have told your former self to do, think, put in place? Is there anything? Yeah, I'm glad this panel is today <laughs> Be- because I, I think I can share a lot more value. And I've like, it's off, off, it happens at every summer for me, but like, I'm like crushed in the first two days with just like a lot of information and I'm really struggling. And then last night, all the clarity came and I'm totally at peace with where I'm at and where we're going. And that's, um, that's huge. But I'll, what I'll explain and what I'd recommend is, um, it's a little bit of a longer answer, but I think it will be helpful to people. I came into the program after dro- losing three operators that caused a lot of damage to my culture and hurt my team. And there's nothing that hurts me more as an, a CEO than somebody hurting my team. Um, and simultaneously being conned by three gurus this same sequence of people giving me really bad advice. (laughs) Um, And so I came into the program finally realizing a wrong lens or ineffective lens that I had around who I was going to listen to advice wise. And I felt comfortable saying, I'm going to do whatever Alex and the team say, because I could, I saw the depth of experience, the depth of research and the passion with which he serves his tribe. This uh, movement, sorry. <laughs> um, 
and that was significant to me because I was like, this is really uncomfortable. I'm, I'm going to move into the passenger seat because that's what Alex has to do. And I have, and I've never done anything that Alex said to do that didn't work. And be, it's because of the depth of experience and the commitment to his community. So I moved in the passenger seat. We implemented a ton of things, but I was still having like some anxiety around the fact that I knew if I was going to do this, that it was going to change my entire business. And that's really scary when I, you spent a long time getting to a marginal level of success, like in my mind. I mean, it's successful, but just not where I wanted to be, how fast it's, it felt like I kept growing slower year over year, even though the numbers didn't say that, like that's how, that's how I was feeling. Like I just could feel the slowdown and constraint. And so coming into the program, I was like, I'm going to move into the passenger seat, but I was scared to death that I was going to lose my business as it was today or as it was there. And I didn't know where I was going. I knew I had to niche down. I've known that for a lot of years and, but I just did, had no idea how to do it. And so what I've learned and what I'd recommend is embrace the system and the process and don't try to figure out where you're going to pivot. Because I think we come into this knowing we're going to have to pivot. I don't know if Alex would know better than me, but I would assume almost every single member that implements it successfully comes in and makes a massive pivot. 100%. Um, and that scared me a lot. And I was scared about it because like losing what I worked so hard to build up after going bankrupt for a million dollars and going through some really traumatic stuff from, from really bad advice. <laughs> um, I was, I was really afraid of that. So coming into it and just trusting that you can implement this and it will make your existing business healthier so that you have the structure and the safety and the cash and the team to pivot effortlessly compared to everything else. Because I now know, and like, I, um, I want to appreciate Maria Alexandra texted me yesterday and she's like, you know, I'm a client of yours, like what's going to happen to me? Um, and I said, well, the good news is I've done the, the good news is I now know that I can safely tr pivot still take great care of you. And when the time is right in the next year or so, or two years, I'm going to hand you off to an even better partner than us. So I felt really secure knowing that I can honor my, you know, one of my number one principles in life of relationships first, I can do everything I can do to take care of my current clients, but we can safely pivot and shift at the right time. And it's all happening like organically and in the right step. So I would encourage you as you're implementing this, don't freak out like I did a little bit, or maybe a lot of it, um, it on the inside of being like, this is going to change my whole business. And I'm scared to death of what that means because, you know, and just implement, trust the process. And then you'll see the moment in the time and you'll just pivot and you're going to skyrocket. It's awesome. And just to, to qualify what I said about a hundred percent of the people in this program pivot, it like everybody does. Ariel went from being at the school every day to being at the school two days a week now. Right. To me, that's two or three, but it's a massive pivot. Ta has, I've, I've known Ta for a long time. We've been friends for, I don't know, a decade now, I think, something like that. And Ta has always done one-on-one -on -one work. And I think that we are finally approaching the place where that's going to pivot. You can feel it, right, Cole? And so just allow, what, what Gabe said, you know, I, I don't want all of you to go, oh, Alex said 100% of pe people pivot. Now I need to go hunt that sucker down. It'll come to you. It'll happen. Like you'll see it, Matt. I know you're on the like on the verge of one. I can feel it. I felt it the last summit, but it's like brighter and louder now. Like I can I can absolutely feel it. And you know I think don't 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 hunt it down. That's really good advice, Gabe. Like don't try and find it. The the process will let it show itself. It's like the same thing that happens in 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 growing like product lines or growing your avatar. Like when somebody says, when do I need to grow my avatar? I'm like, the market will show you because the same person is going to be showing up that's right, you know, right next to your avatar or right, right there. And you're going to go, OK, now we need to grow this. And so I just want I don't want anybody chasing the pivot. Let it happen. Let it come to you. Like let, the, let your business show you when it needs it. Um, but thanks for sharing that. That was insightful. Uh, I just know that sometimes what I say is heard through a megaphone and seen through a microscope. So I don't want anybody going, oh, I need to pivot. Allie's only been in this program for six months. The pivot she's doing is like almost 100 percent, right? <laughs> so, Jason, Rachel, same question for you. If you went back, well, yeah. Um, I've been yeah thinking about it. And before we implemented things, um, we had one weekly meeting and it was like 
so overwhelming and like so much packed into this one weekly meeting like oh my gosh and we started our week with that and it was just kind of starting the week on like a this could have been an email kind of meeting and it just I don't know, like, it was, yeah you know like it was so like I don't know it's just a lot so um for us I think implementing the daily huddle and like just shorter like yeah that targeted communication and just regular communication starting there and implementing that made it a lot easier to like then implement other changes because we're consistently chatting with our team on a regular basis and you know how is your morning going um now we see you know our ea's baby on zoom in the morning um you know we're just like super connected especially now that we're virtual um so just and i know there's like you know several meetings within the cadence but starting with that daily huddle and just going from there um with meetings, uh, really decrease the overwhelm, the pressure and noise, starts our day off on a nice note. We actually do the breathing um, most days oh, too. To do that um, so Dang. that's been really helpful and started off on a light note with our team uh, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Eddie, even though you reminded me, I forgot to do the breathing this morning, so sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to add to that, Jason? I just wanted to just kind of echo a little bit too. Um, I have a sticky note. Uh, next to my main workstation and it just has the word something with a line and then the word nothing um, just to mean something over nothing and I think that the, just the idea of implementing all of it all at once if you're like me um, I can get like a deer in a headlights kind of look and just pause and, and like it's just too much and I like the idea of just kind of parsing it out and you know like what works at like like do something but don't get stuck with doing everything you know Unless you're that magical person that can do that, that's cool too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've we've had very few of those. We have had members who come to the, the this program and they're like, install everything in 30 days. It sometimes it's worked. Sometimes it's just way too much pressure on the system. So like doing it methodically and getting the operating system in the first 90 days really is what works best. So um, this is this is like personal. What is the most positive personal change for you as a human that has happened from op installing the operating system and putting this program into your business? That's a good one. Um, uh, for me, it's just actually seeing myself as an entrepreneur. Um, hmm. I, I don't know. I grew up with parents who were like, you know, get a job and very like blue collar and, you know, like that's what's expected of you. Um, but I don't think that way. I've been on, led on my own personal health journey and like, I know that I'm meant to do more than just that. Um, but it's always, I've always felt like the black sheep in my family and, um, yeah, just knowing that there are other people that want to change the world and like, it's okay to not, you know, have a regular nursing job and, and like this normal, boring life. Um, <laughs> it's a lot more fun, uh, trying to change the world. It can be stressful, but um, I guess just realizing that and just always continuing uh, to improve my mindset and uh, break those glass ceilings um, that hold, hold me back and hold us back. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> what about you, Jason? Man, uh, I'm going to quote you. Is that okay? Sure. I'm not a unicorn <laughs> you know uh and i i think learning learning that has been awesome because i mean i i feel i feel that's important for me to know um for not just my the business but just the idea of that there are other people out there i'm not alone you know and there are other people with the same mission or at least a similar mission that you know we can collaborate with and, and join forces and have even a bigger impact and i think that's that's super cool so thank you for reminding me of that many times you got it jason <laughs> I would say this has um, come to, it's been happening, but I was able to name it in the last month or six weeks. And a huge realization and help personally is that I am not my company. Oh, yeah. That's and huge. The, and it's, I think that that comes from a place of understanding that I can develop a skill set to be an effective business you know, CEO. And so... I've always had the belief that if any everything disappeared in my life, I could just I'd be back on my feet probably at the same mark in 90, 120 days. Like I know I have the skill set. 
for it, but I wasn't able to detach myself from the company because everything was so personal. Everything was a personal attack. Everything was personal, good or bad, you know, yeah. and so it was super attached. And probably the way that I got to that, you know, realization or that personal change is just how religiously you preach self-care and, and like, you know, cold plunging for me has been massive because I've gone from being, I, I would say a year or so, you know, a year or two years ago, uh, or a year or two years ago, I wasn't like super reactionary because that's something I've just really been conscious about working on. But I would say that I am in such a state of contentment and in peace almost all the time. Um, I haven't been sick in two and a half years, which I used to get sick after every big project, every event like this I would go to. Everything was just high stress and too much for me to take in. Um, so like just the self care routine has made me a better father, a better partner to Rachel, you know, um, a way better CEO <laughs> and I'm just less reactionary and, and life is easier. And I'm, I'm the happiest and wealthiest I've ever been in my life. That's awesome. Gabe, congratulations, man. Wait, can we give it back to Gabe really quick? But thank you for clapping. Sorry. I interrupted your applause, Gabe. They were going to be a lot more enthusiastic. Um, <laughs> Can you just share with, because this is something that I'm super passionate about. I think as entrepreneurs, our nervous systems are kind of um, more hyperactive than the average human being. I feel like I can actually prove that, like that entrepreneurs, and not, not feel like, I am 100% certain that I can prove that entrepreneurs' nervous systems are more reactive, more sensitive, that we get triggered far more easily. How many of you would agree with that just observing yourself? Okay. So can you just share like two minutes on what cold plunging has done for you? Because I think it's this discipline that has been seen as like this macho thing or like this, like, um, I'm like, it's like an aggression thing or something like that. And like, I see Julie Broad on the distance and I remember watching Julie, oh, she's not there. Oh yeah, there you are, Julie. I remember watching Julie, like, I think it was in a garage, like go out and break the ice and do a cold plunge. And I'm like, yes, I think every entrepreneur should, should put themselves in purposeful discomfort to allow their nervous systems to go, oh, okay, well, if we can do that, anything's possible. Can you just share two minutes on what it's done for you? Yeah, that's a good description of it because for me, I, I've had some practices like this, but nothing with the effectiveness level of cold plunging. And my belief about cold plunging is that if I choose intentional positive adversity at the very beginning of my day, or it's like the third thing I do in the morning, then the rest, there's nothing else that can happen in the day that's as extreme as wants. I want to be reactionary, especially early on, as you know, getting into like 40, 45 degree water and sitting in there for three minutes. And then I do it again because, you know, that's that seemed like a great idea because I'm a little <laughs> extreme, but I do it twice in the morning now. But anyway, um, getting in there, I can't remember a time in the last eight months, nine months of doing it where I was like, yes, I'm super excited to do this today. Like that, no. that it happened maybe once or twice. Like it's pretty rare. It's gotta be pretty hot outside too. Yeah. But when it's like five degrees outside and my cold plunge is outside and I'm getting in my cold plunge and I'm like, this sucks. I don't, and I say a little more graphically than that. Uh, and then I get in and I remind myself that I can be present in this moment. I can breathe. I can give my total tension, attention and focus to what's going on in my mind, how my body is feeling, and it's incredibly uncomfortable. But in a matter of about 90 seconds, I'm like, and yeah. like the world pauses and three minutes in 40 degree water makes it feels like a really long time in a good way after you get into the habit of doing it. And so my world calms down. I'm like, it was so helpful for me during just the intense legal battle I've going on with custody of my son. It was super helpful during all of that because like I can, I can sit in here for five, seven, eight, ten 10 minutes, you know, on the weekends when I have more time. And if I can sit in this amount of discomfort for 10 minutes, there's literally nothing that is going to happen today besides you actually, you know, putting a bullet through my head or probably a couple, there's nothing else that's going to bother me or stop me. And it, it's not from a place of, macho manliness or that has nothing to do with that it's about being totally calm and content and just being with yourself all the uncomfortable parts and it's been game changing it is my favorite addiction yeah <laughs> so it's awesome thank you for sharing gabe for those of you who are thinking about it 
um, as entrepreneurs, I believe our, our personality is addicted to dopamine. And that's why we do so much. And that's why we push ourselves. And this is for the operators in the room too. Um, the latest research on cold plunges says that when you get out of a three minute cold plunge of under about 45 degrees, just like Gabe was talking about, you have three to 400% as much dopamine in your head. And so for me, it's the hardest thing I do every morning. And I still like, I, I didn't get to it today because I was running late. And I'm like, I'm like, yes, I'm running late. Cause it's, I, cause I, <laughs> it's so hard to do. And, and I, sometimes I'm like, okay, am I setting it up? So I'm running late, but <laughs> It's the hardest thing to get into, and it's the most gratifying thing to get out of. And it's just like I, you feel a complete chemical shift. So I'm a huge advocate for super weird things. Cold plunging is one of them. I think you should consider it. Go ahead, Amanda. What, what about you? What's the biggest thing that's changed as a human? Um, I was thinking about it this whole time, and then I got caught up in what he was saying. Uh, I well, I where's my mother when I need her? She's the <laughs> one that's actually seen probably the most in. Um, change in me as an individual since I've been involved in this program. And going back to the whole thing when we were initially met and I talked about how I'm not capable of growing this business, I could see the potential. I could see the need. There's a huge need in this industry for what I'm doing. I never wanted to be like a regular lawyer and I never wanted to be like a regular law firm. My big favorite compliment in the entire world is you don't seem like an attorney. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, um, and then, you know, the, the clientele in which we serve are so deserving and so, you know, you just want to go above and beyond and everything. And that, that's what I did for the first several years in workings exclusively with veterans is I just poured my entire life and my entire soul into it. And I was burned out, yeah. you know, and I still get burned out. It's certainly not one of those things that you join the program and the magic wand gets and everything's great. You know, when we make all these changes, you know, it's one step forward, three steps back, three steps forward, one step back. You know, I still get caught up in a lot of the reactionary stuff. But, um, you know, there's been a lot that's happened in the last four years as being part of this program and reading books that people have recommended me to read and meeting people at these events that I've known, being around people who, you know, have that same kind of mentality. We're outside there. We're, we're weird. Um, and they don't really understand us. That's all of that stuff has really kind of created a, a sense of confidence, a sense of knowing. I studied leadership for years, but getting down to the practical of how do you actually execute leadership instead of standing in front of the room or being the boss at the end of the hall in the corner office, how do you actually implement leadership with your entire team? So a lot of that stuff I've learned. And I mentioned my mom earlier because she has this thing that she feels like everybody needs an Alex. So, <laughs> um, because she understood, you know, when I, I've said this at many events before that, but with a lot of new people that, um, a 30 minute conversation when I initially met Alex and I had started listening to the EPTs and really figuring out, oh my gosh, somebody understands me. I joke about the fact that he pegged me in 30 minutes better than my therapist after five years. So it's, and I feel like it's not just, you know, I keep referring to Alex, but it's really the people who are in this room and online and in the community that have that like-mindedness that at least has helped me build a sense of confidence and understanding and knowing we're going in the right direction. We may get off kilter now and then, but it's refocused. That's why I come to these events all the time. It's a time in which I refocus. And I hated the online because I couldn't, you know, I'm in California, so it's two hours behind. And I'm sitting in my office at seven o'clock in the morning hearing people come in. We're here, it's like I just check out as much as I possibly can. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Momentum Podcast. If you're ready to take the next step and see how we can help you simplify your business operations so that you can experience some of the radical growth that these entrepreneurs have, we're ready to help you. If you go to simpleoperations.com right now, you'll be able to start a survey to book a call with our team. Let us help you identify your greatest areas of opportunity and how we can help you move forward by making it radically simple to get more done without having to do it all yourself. Simpleoperations.com. We look forward to hearing from you.